All right, so we're on. I'm Sue Bouchard, for those of you I haven't met, but I think I know all of you in the room. Um, today we're going to be doing miniature quilts. And what I want to do is I want to start a program called Thoroughly Modern Minis. And so my intent is to take quilts that we've done from Quilt in a Day, or maybe some of my own patterns, and make them smaller. So I just kind of want to talk about that. So on the back page of your pattern, You'll see that there are some instructions and some guidelines on what makes miniatures miniature. And for those of you that are not in the building, there's a click on your website that you can actually download a PDF file with all this information. Okay, so if you have friends that want to watch it, they can do that as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is what makes a miniature a miniature. Now some people have like, um, like dollhouse enthusiasts and everything has to be 1 12th the size. So in quilts, if you have a 12 inch block to make it miniature, it would only be a 1 inch size. So to give you some perspective, this would be like a full size quilt, okay, basic nine patch. We've all made these. But to make it a true miniature, it would be this big. <laughs> so, so does that give you some perspective of, so don't get intimidated, we have really easy ways we're going to do this today. But I just, I think this is a really good lesson to really see how, what 112th is. Um, a few years ago, we were do, working on a book called Jewel Box, and I don't know where Eleanor was, but she was out of town and the quilt had to be made. So Benertex gave me this stack of fabric, and it was like a fat quarter bundle. And they said, OK, make the cover quilt. So here I am. You have to laugh at this quilting. This is my machine quilting. This is how good I am. <laughs> I want you to notice how good that is. OK, so, so here's the cover quilt. OK, you guys remember that? Front of the book, right? Very popular. OK. Very beautiful. So I had some fabric left over, right? So I wanted to make a smaller quilt. So here is, I need somebody to catch these. Maybe I can just put them over there. So I had made this little quilt. Oh. See. Mm -hmm. I love it. This, um, I think it is finished like five inch blocks or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I still had fabric left over. So then I made oh, this little quilt. Oh, <laughs> See, they're getting cuter and cuter, huh? Yes. Well, I still it. had fabric left over. <laughs> so I made this little quilt. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that fun? And I can't believe I did this in 96 and I haven't lost them. That's the most exciting part of it. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, so if you look at your listing that I gave you, that's kind of the whole thing about what makes a miniature a miniature quilt. So several things are gonna make you successful at doing this, and other things will make you not so successful. So the first lesson is you have to pick fabrics that are really like small print, tone-on-tone -tone type things, okay? Large prints will not work. And I have like a little exercise to show you. I pulled this fabric. It's very, it's kind of large scale. Kind of. Kind of large scale. <laughs> it's great fabric. I know where you can get some. <laughs> so anyway, I cut out a little template. And what this template is, is the finished size of the block that we're going to be working on today. So just by moving this template over this fabric, can you see how different you can end up with. Okay, so oh, yes. if, if you want a block that's gonna be looking all the same, do not use this large scale fabric. It's not gonna work for you at all. So keep that in mind. The colors that you're gonna be using today, you'll see the quilt, but it's like a nine shades of red. So you'll be fine with that. And then the another thing to think about, when you have small prints, it also means it's gonna be more towards a little quilt, right? When you think little, think little all the way around, not just the size of it. Um, the next thing, when you choose between lights, darks, and mediums, make sure that you have a really big contrast, okay? Um, when Patty did her color demo, there's those little like viewfinders you can look through, like red shaded or green shaded clear plastic, and that will ha really help you tell the value of your fabrics, okay? Um, precision. When you are doing little things, if you're off a teeny bit, it's going to show up much more than when you're doing a full size block. So we're gonna try and work on techniques that are gonna really make your precision increase, okay? And make it truer. Because if you just think, if you're off of three threads of a six inch square, you're not gonna really notice it. But if you're off of three threads of a quarter inch square, you're probably gonna notice it. You know, it could be half your square, you're gonna be off. 
Okay, so that's good. So when we start to sew, I'm actually going to sew a block for you. But there's, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start, and we always sew with the quarter inch seam. Okay? And the quarter inch seam, I really want to make sure you have a good quarter inch seam on your thing. But what we're going to do, we're going to press it. And then after we press it, we're going to cut back to an eighth of an inch. And what's that's going to do? It's going to reduce your bulk. Okay? Because you're going to have a whole bunch of seams going underneath a tiny little block. Um, when you, and when you, after you do that, and you also want to sew with just 15 stitches per inch. You can't use a really large seam because you'd only have like three stitches per patch and it's not going to really hold it in. So at least go 15. Some people like to go 18, but if you have to take something out, taking out 18 stitches per inch is really hard. You got a little piece of fabric, it's totally going to tear it up. You know, you're going to have to basically start over with your patchwork. Okay, um, I always want you to assembly line sew. Always start with a little piece of fabric, go into your patchwork, and put a little scrap fabric at the very end. If you try and start with the needle you know, directly on your patchwork, it's just gonna go right down into your needle case and you're never gonna see that piece of fabric again, right? <laughs> you know how that goes. So, so that's kind of some hints to get you going. Okay, so today, what we're gonna do, you have a choice of two sizes of quilts to make. You can make this, this size, which is the 19 inch square, and this one was made with a charm pack, you know, the little two and a half inch squares. Or we're going to bake the blocks the same, but you can trim them down, and this is the little one. Oh, wow. So you have an option that sewing, the sewing is act exactly the same, it's just the way we trim up. And then on this one, I put like a little block on the back, mm -hmm. a little full size block just to show. And it was funny when they first advertised this on the internet. The, um, the guy who took the pictures took this picture, oh. Oh. and I, I'm like looking at it, I'm going, wait a minute, this is what I want them to see. <laughs> we're not going to make one little miniature of one block. <laughs> a pot holder, we're making a miniature too. Right. So did everybody get their instructions right? Yeah. I should put these up on the board. And I made this little kite for Kylie. My intent was to have Kylie's picture taken with the kite, but I could never get Kylie and Dylan in the same place at the same time, so that's what happened there. But she'll get her kite anyway. Her birthday's coming up. Perfect. Yeah. I don't have any more pins. Stick. Okay. So, is there any questions? I'll ask the dumb one. What is 15 stitches to the what setting do you think that is? Two point oh. Two point oh. Okay, so when you start with your um, patchwork, you can start with just cutting two and a half inch squares, or you can actually start with a charm square, which is five inches. And I'm, that's what I'm gonna use today. I just had a little pack, and I'm just gonna cut it into four two and a half inch squares, okay? So that's easy enough done. Now you're, in your little kits that I prepared for you, they're already cut, oh, your squares are cut. Because you knew I'd do that, right? Yeah. We no. appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, so once I get them cut, I'm going to pile them all up so they're all on top of each other. And I wouldn't do more than four layers at a time. I feel that if you do more than four layers at a time, what happens is you, it kind of shifts, your bottom fabric starts shifting to the side and you're going to lose your accuracy. Okay, now I'm going to go, we're going to actually, we can look at our, our little handout. Okay, we're on page three. Nicely, we skipped all the way over to page three. Okay, and I'm going to do a little mark, and your mark's gonna be littler than mine. I'm just gonna do a big old mark so you can see it. But you're gonna mark halfway down, so you're at, what's half of two and a half? One and a quarter, right? Okay, can you see that mark? Okay, we're gonna do it on the other side. Okay, now this is probably the most testy thing you're gonna do in this whole pattern is making the kite shape. We um, teach Kylie's kite a lot on the road and you wouldn't believe the shapes that we end up with. <laughs> but remember we're making kites and look at the kite, you wanna make that shape, okay? We get like triangles, sometimes we get squares and I don't really know how that happens, but. So we're gonna cut off that and then we're gonna go to the next mark point and go to the same opposite corner. And can you see how that's a kite? Mm -hmm. Now when you make your mark, OK, 
okay? It's real important that you actually cut, you measure from the outside edge of that mark. Don't measure from the, you know, if your mark goes in on your patchwork, don't cut from, like, let's say, this part of the mark to the end. Do to the outside edge of the fabric, okay? Because it's going to make it a little skinnier if you do it the other way. The next thing we have, we're going to save those little patches. The next thing we're going to have is we're going to have some rectangles. And these are also all cut for you to size. Okay. And you want to leave them in pairs, and that's the way that you'll find them in your kit. You need two pairs per block. Okay. And this is really easy. You don't even have to mark it. We're just going to do one diagonal line and cut. Okay. So we have two stacks. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to put them all right side up. Now this fabric's really close, and if you ever sew with batiks, batiks are also really close to their right and wrong, but it's make sure that you just methodically put one up, one down, one up, one down, okay? All right, so we got that, and then we press our kite, and it should kind of look like a square. Can you see the square? Yes. Okay, so we want to take all of our patches on our right side, Okay, on the right side, and we're going to take them and we're going to put them in a place that's far, far away. <laughs> because if you don't, you'll accidentally pick it up and sew it on the wrong side. And do you know how I know that? Because I have done that. I have seen it done and I have done that. Okay, so now I get to sew. This is really fun. I get to sew. I really do sew, you know. <laughs> these, are, these are some quilts that I made. Aren't they fun? You can tell I'm going kind of wild, can't you? Okay, so I'm going to take my kite, and I'm going to put my kite right on top of my left triangle. Okay, can you all see that? And the placement of that triangle is I have like just one little triangle that sits on stop, and where I start my quarter inch seam is going to be right in the dip of that. Can you see that? And I was going to use red thread because that's what we're supposed to do, but I didn't think it would show up too much. So I'm trying this bright blue, so hopefully that will work for you. And you're just going to assembly line sew all four of them. Can you see I started with a little piece of fabric? And if you, you guys will probably need to hand out some little fabrics for you because you cut, your fabric's cut to size, so I'll make sure you get those. It also helps if you don't have a piece of fabric, if you actually put your needle down into your fabric before you start sewing, that helps avoid that kind of that bird's nest you can get underneath your patchwork at the very beginning. So you're just gonna do four of them. Now sometimes when you get to the long tip at the other end, it's gonna start going squirrely on you. You know, kind of not stay at a quarter inch, don't worry about it because we're gonna cut it off. I'll tell you what to worry about and what not to worry about. That's, you don't worry about that. Okay. And then the final one. How many of you have made Kylie's kite in the past? Oh, I gotta do my little happy dance guy before we're done. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I do worry about that, but in this case, when I started with my charm square, and I'll get out a charm square so I can show you what I mean. You'll notice that there's ragged edges on the edges of charm squares, you know, that's like, there's like pinked, mm -hmm. pinking shears and that's so it doesn't ravel. Those drive me berserk yeah. because I don't notice so to the outside of them. I don't notice so to the inside of them. I don't notice so down the middle, which that's a total guesstimate. So when I lined up my squares, I lined it up so all of those straight edges were on top of each other and that's where I gauged my quarter, or an inch and a quarter measurement from. Okay, but yours, you don't have any pinks in yours. Okay, so you don't worry about whether it's length of grain. 
not when they're this small. I think the bigger the piece of fabric you have, the more you need to be concerned about um, straight grain. Okay. okay. So originally in the pattern, we would press everything towards these triangles away from the kites. But when I did these miniatures, I am pressing my first seam towards the kite. And that's why you have a picture at the top of page four that's showing that seam. And I take my fingers and I'll get started and I do, I use my wooden iron a lot just to get the seam established before I take it over to the iron. I think that helps avoid any pleats or any kind of, do you not know what a wooden iron is? A wooden iron, I say, oh, somebody doesn't know what a wooden iron. It's just a piece of wood. And it's really funny, um, this one guy, this wife asked her husband to make her a wooden iron. He comes out with this, and we saw it, it was like this big with this big flat end on it. And he goes, here's your wooden iron, but I don't know how you're gonna plug it in. It's, <laughs> but anyway, it's just, it just establishes the direction your fabric's gonna go. It really does help. So this is real important that you're gonna press your first team seam towards your kite, and you'll know why in a little bit. So that's a little different from the, from the original pattern. Okay, so I got it started. So now I'm gonna take them over to the iron, which may or may not be still on. It was on. This iron's been having a little problem lately. Even though you have it so it automatically stays. Yeah, I think that's good. Red and then goes away. Yeah. Well, the plug is a new one. Should we bend the prongs back a little bit? This is how you plug. Just wet your fingers. Did you hear her? She wants me to wet my fingers. So it's plugging now. Yeah, it's. If you get it you know it's working. Hey, I went to plug it in one time and it wouldn't fit, so I decided to squeeze the prongs. Yeah. And just as it went, I, my brain went, no! But it was too late. Did you get shocked? Oh, man, I got thrown across the room. Yeah. Well, it's one way of getting curly hair, right? <laughs> That's good shit. Okay, well, I'm just going to press these lightly. I noticed that the, the blue iron was missing this morning. I have a feeling somebody I know has it in Julian. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, you guys that are going to Julian tomorrow, you check it out. Yes. Okay. okay. Do you want to have to retrieve it? No, no, no. No, it's fine. I was just, I was checking yesterday to make sure I had all the equipment here. And so I, I knew she was using the machine, so that was fine. And I sort of scouted out where the mat was, and I scouted out where, you know, the pressing thing was, and I scouted out the iron. I come in, and I'm going, everything's gone. So, <laughs> okay, but the machine was bad. I should say the machine was bad. Okay, so I'm just going to take my straight edge and you want to line up your straight edge against the side of the kite there's always a question how am I going to cut off that big old point well you just the side of your kite and you just trim it off and you want to do that on all four you're gonna it's gonna seem like you're cutting a lot of fabric off when you make miniatures but it's much easier to go big and cut it down than to try and sew it at the size that you're gonna end up with when I first started making quilts, I only made miniatures because I didn't really have a lot of money and I had this little four-year-old boy that required lots of attention. So I would go down and um, we'd just get little bits of fabric. Okay, so we have these all sewn on. Okay, now we're gonna go get those ones that I had you put to a far away place and we're gonna sew those on. This time we're gonna put the triangle over the kite so it goes like that, okay? Again, we're going to have the little point hang over the top and where our quarter inch starts, it's gonna start right where we're going to have that dip, okay? Think of it like reading a book, okay? Like you, you turn your pages, so the first time the kite goes over, the second time the triangle goes over, okay? All right. I just realized what I forgot to do. What did I forget to do? I forgot to trim back my seam, right? Yeah. You guys didn't catch me on that. We're going to trim it back now. Yep. You can do it with your rotary cutter, but it's not much leeway if it scoots. 
You know what I mean? If you only have a quarter inch and you're cutting it half down, then you'd have to start over too. You don't want to have to start over, right? I have a card trick that I just finished. That's going to be one of our classes. And um, you really need to trim on that one. OK. So I'm just going to add on the triangle. I'm not going to worry about that one. I just wanted to see if you guys were watching. But I don't think you were. You weren't. I know. It's not in your head to cut it back. You know what I mean? It's like a new thing you got to do. No, that's why I use the small stitch length. So I don't lock. Whenever I've done locking, it always seems to be a case that I need to take it out, which makes it that much harder to take it out. Okay, the fourth one. So in your kit, you're going to get um, all the pieces cut to size to make your blocks. And then um, the rest of it's going to be a piece of fabric because you're going to cut that accordingly to whether you want to make the bigger of the two quilts or the smaller of the two quilts. We'll see how brave you guys are today. OK, so this time, remember last time I pressed towards the kite? This time I'm going to press towards the triangle. So if you look on the back, there's a picture right in the middle of page four. You're going to see that your seams are going to be going in the same direction. And that's what I want. I want all my seams to, when I sew the block together, I want them all to swirl in the same direction. I want them all to lock. All right, let's see if my iron is still on. It's looking good. I think um, doing that wooden iron really helps those pleats not come. OK, now we're going to square up. Now we're going to use the on point ruler, which I asked you to bring today. Um, and there's instructions that come with it. That if you brought them, that's great. If not, I have some for you to borrow in class. OK. But what we're going to do, obviously, this patch is smaller than this ruler, right? Yeah. But the important angle here is establishing this point, right? OK. So I don't really care what's going on over here. So I'm going to just square up that, those first two sides, putting the lines on my ruler, right on my seam lines. I'm making sure that I have this good quarter inch tip at the top, OK? And I am going to trim it off, OK? Now, if I decide to make the mini, which is the larger of the two, I am going to turn it around. And this is where we're going to use our 6 and a half inch square up ruler. And I need to square it up to 2 inches. So I will just put my two inch lines right here and get rid of the excess. If you decide to go really little, and you're, that's what you're going to do, one inch. Wow. OK? Mm -hmm. So I'm, for the purpose of video, I'm going to do the bigger of the two. But it's done exactly the same technique. So I'm going to do the two inch. But do you understand what I mean about first we're just establishing that? And you're going to find I'm going to use like geese rulers like that. I'm going to use the triangle and the square rulers. I, I have a bunch of rulers that I'm doing that to. OK. Oops. So I need to do that to all four. That's pretty tricky, huh? I was really excited when I thought of this. <laughs> it was, I was up in Montana. It was me and the bears. Do you have bears on your vacation? Um, not too many. Saw a lot of, um, oh, cats, big cats. <laughs> the, big, the big yellow cats. 
and it's eagle, saw a lot of eagles and osprey. Are you near water up there? Mm-hmm, a lot of loons. I, I'm actually on the water. Then the, where there's like a little inlet, and it's like a loon, official loon reproduction area where they go count the loons. On a particular day, they count all the loons. And for all the loons that were born, only one baby made it that an eagle didn't get this year. It was really sad. Was it because of all the big cats? The eagles. And the mm. osprey. The osprey yeah, the osprey liked them too. So you should see, so this little baby was kind of like in junior high, you know, it's kind of mid-sized by the time we were up there. And there was like this, the whole like group of adult loons would just like escort this baby loon. I mean, it was always surrounded by the, the moms and dads. Are the loons in danger? No, but they're not really abundant. They're not like um, Canadian geese or anything. The loon is on the Canadian coin. And they call that coin the loony. The loony. I've never seen a real loony. Um, the only reason I know that is you need one to use the bath to use the showers at the parks. <laughs> <laughs> they put a loony in it. I'd make the loon noise for you, but I know I'm being filmed, so I don't want that out on public. <laughs> make the loon sound. She would. That's more the owl sound. <laughs> My sister-in-law can do it really well, and they actually talk back to her. It's really oh, fun. Okay, so here we got our block. It's all ready to get sewn together. And we're just going to flip the left over the right. And it's really fun. We're going to cut back those seams again. You guys aren't catching me today. I got all in the loons. <laughs> the loons are really fun. A lot of deer. And I was surprised there's still a lot of baby deer. And there's a lot of twin deers. Like little baby twins. And there's also not fun things like pack rats and hornets. We had um, we had an infestation one winter that we took care of, and we have one of our neighbors isn't the best neighbor at all, and it turned out that all the pack rats went to his house this year. <laughs> we kind of laughed. Okay. So I'm ready to sew. So it's going left over right. And it's going to be really good because all these seams are going to lock now. And when you have locking seams, you're going to get much better match points, right? If we can lock, we want to lock. And I just chain them together. Oh, that's that one I forgot. That one's in there forever. I just do things like that to show you that I do things like that too. No, sometimes people think you just, if it's one inch, you cut it, I mean, if it's two inches, you just make it one inch. And it doesn't always work like that. Um, sometimes you have to take an account, you know, add like an inch and a half if you're doing like two seams into it. But I have a whole formula sheet of one time that I meet with you guys that I'm going to go over with how you actually miniaturize all different sizes. Oh, and it's like a handout sheet. I just thought it was a little much to start with that. <laughs> I thought I just wanted to get your confidence up about sewing. OK, so I'm going to be smart. And I'm going to cut it back now before I forget. Yeah, I get that question a lot on the phone. They either want to make a wall hanging a king size or they want to make a king size finishing at nine inches or something. <laughs> Can you give me a minute on that one? And I, I always kind of hesitate because I hadn't really done it. It's just all, this is ideally how it should work. And I always have a disclaimer when I'm done saying, well, this should work for you. <laughs> Okay, when I'm sewing along, when I get to this middle seam right here, I want the one on top to go up and the one underneath to go down. That's the way they're going to lock together. See, this block's pretty easy, huh? Hmm. It is. It is. We're going to continue on after this. You're going to have it at the club? 
Yeah, I want to. Oh. Yeah. So here's our block. And you can see on the back, I'm going to open up the back seam. So we reduce that bulk. And can you see how all these seams are going in the same direction? These seams, and this is going down, this is going up. That means this is going to go in that direction, and this is going to go in that direction. And when you do that, this middle is just going to pop open, and you're going to get a really flat, flat seam. OK? Yeah, I'm going to trim it. I open it up before I trim it, because there's nothing to hold on to to open up that middle seam. Yeah. So I trimmed them all except for that first one I forgot, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. So now I want to talk about putting them together. So in comes the little done ones. Wasn't that tricky? OK. So what we're going to do, talk about that later. If we just lay them out, as you can tell, it's just like three across. And what I always do, I just lay everything out. I don't really worry about their placement at first. I'll just lay them out and then I'll mix them around later. You know, because I obviously don't want those three orange ones right on top of each other. Okay, so we want to kind of move these around. When I have a real strong color like an orange, it's really good if you don't have that orange in the same row or same column. Okay? See how it just like really distributes it nicely and doesn't go orange to that corner? Okay. Um, probably this one. I don't. Kind of orange, but not that much. How does that look? This kind of worked out neat too, huh? Okay. So, and then you're just going to put in, oop, I'm stepping on my little teeny tiny one down there. You just want to put in some lattice and cornerstones, like you typically would put your quilt together. But I want to show you if you're doing the mini. If you're doing the real mini one, these little squares are cut at three-fourths of an inch. And it's really hard to hold on to that, right? So there's a little trick to do that. You kind of get this idea. I need Teresa, don't I? So you get the idea of how we're, we're putting that. If you're doing the miniature, what I'm having you do is I'm having you sew it into strips, OK? So this is my 3 quarter inch strips, and this is my 1 and a half inch strips. So when you make the strip set, then all I have to do is I'll just go across and cut it at three-fourths of an inch, and you have something to hold on to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. See, then you have your lattice and your cornerstones all sewn together already. Good idea. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't think it was really necessary to do it on this, but you could. But what I did with these, this is actually two more charm squares, so I didn't really have the length to do my strip sets for this one. So you kind of have to work. Your, um, the way that your yardage chart is developed is I did it that you would be doing this method for both sizes of quilts. OK? So you guys ready? Did you have any questions? Are you excited? What size is it if you trim it down? Not two, not one, but one and a half. Oh, you could do that, too. It would finish at, if you trim it at one and a half, it would be a two-inch block. This, you're always going to press towards your lattice. Okay. Everything goes to your lattice. Okay. So anyway, thank you. I think thank I'm done. You. you can turn it off. Oops. You can turn it off. You can turn it off.